Welcome back, everyone, to the North American Challengers League. Cincinnati Fear, way to swing for it. They continue with the test and get another dub against 100 Thieves Challengers. They're good, man. They are good. This team, they are absolutely cracked. Just like Cubby was calling out, their macro calls, the decision making, they are constantly working as a team. You'll love to see it. You this, absolutely do. Go ahead, Cubby. This team's probably the easiest team for me to talk about in the league because the expectations we had for this team versus how they're actually doing and performing, it's so different and so in their favor. Like, we just cannot help but continue to celebrate so many impressive things that they're doing on the Rift. I mean, they just destroyed 100 Thieves Challengers. Like, mm -hmm. uh, this team, again, they are a legit top-of-the-table team, one that everyone has to respect and look out for, and they continue to earn that respect with these performances. Uh, a lot of respect earned and a lot of numbers put up by Cincinnati Fear. And I want to dive into those numbers, not just for Fear, but 100 Thieves Challengers as well. Ooh. As our halftime segment is going to be about stats. It's called Over Under. Rules are simple. We're going to flip a coin to figure out who goes first. You say a player. Once that player Let's is just taken, go first. I'm I will not a give coward. you a stat. Hold on. We'll let, give me, you a stat. let me adjust my monitors here to make sure that I'm not cheating. Yeah, actually, I got, <laughs> uh, hold on. I got to do the same. <laughs> give me a second. I will I give you a stat, on. and you will have to tell me if that stat is over or under the true value. Okay, hold okay. on. I, I'm, I'm not I'm actually... afraid of going first. You don't need to flip a coin. You I'm know what? Fine. You know what? I'll let Cubby decide who goes first. He I'll won the first. last one. Yeah, I'll go first. All right, Cubby, pick a player. I went first last time. I get to pick a player? I, you're yeah. hosting. I, I No, you get to pick a player. All, all 10 of them are categories. Go ahead and pick one. You know what? Give me Perry. Ooh. Perry. Okay. Perry, the stat is he averages 380 gold per minute. Is this over or under the actual value? I actually Ooh. don't know GPM stats that well. That, yeah. For a jungler that seems, and a team that's winning, that actually seems pretty close to where I expect Perry to be. I'm going to go that's a little... I'm going to go under. Ooh. It is... Over. He's at oh. 354. Perry might be oh, one of our most well-rounded junglers. He's always active on the map. And I personally just like this stat because he's got a great balance of both trying to affect his lanes and still keeping his fire. I, I was Where way was out. The... No, one, no one has 380 GPM as a jungler. I'm dumb. <laughs> I I was like, that. that's a big number. I, I yeah, only look at that right. number, though, for carries because like, that's really only where it matters. All right. That's one missed point for Cubby. Alex, I pick a player. That. Um... Let's go with Yukino. Keep it in Yukino. junglers. On average, Yukino is 15% of his team's damage share. Is that over or under the actual value? God, that's a close one. Because I can't remember if it's 14.7 or 15.7. I think that's where he's at. It's neither. Shut up, Cubby. You're cheating. Um, Studying. Yeah, you're cheating. That that's cheating. I'm not. I, put, e I didn't even use that time that you I, were answering. I could have done this. I need thing. an answer, man. I'm gonna go with under. Under is wrong. It is over. He <sighs> has a damage share of 14.2, which is considerably on the low side for a lot of junglers. I know hey, he has a lot of good again? skirmish play. 14.2. Uh, he has a lot of good okay. skirmish play, a lot of good early setup, and that makes 100 Thieves lanes, once they get going, kind of operate where, by themselves, right? Where, where, where are you pulling these stats from? Uh, GOL. Oh, because I got 17.1. You got 17.1? Percent. Yeah, damage percentage. I, I might have picked it for the week only. Ooh. Oh, okay. If you picked it for the week, then that's harder. Okay, okay. Uh, this is... Wait, 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 wait. We're talking about the overall season, by the way. I just want to make that clear. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm looking okay. at season stats, yeah. All right, all right, all so right. So I get Cubby. a point, then. Do you get a point? I On my screen, he gets a point. He gets yeah. a point. Okay, okay. I'm going to double check it and make sure right, I, Cubby, I, I, I look at the right number. I said Every about time you with numbers... uh, thank you so much, Cubby. <laughs> all right, <laughs> you're, well, you're amazing. I thank you for letting me study. So now I'm going to be even more embarrassed when I miss the next one. Uh... <laughs> I still got a 14.2 here. Damage what percentage. The? Yeah. Hold yeah, on. Yeah, 14.2 Yukino. Let me look oh, at this. Oh, it was Yuki. I was looking at Perry. Oh, Thank bro. you. Okay, okay. Making me sweat right. and worry right, about right, everything. Right, Making right. me think I lost right. my mind again. Since, I'm a bad Since listener. Cubby messed up, can he get a negative point? No, 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 oh. no, Alex. You're not going to sabotage him like that. I wasn't a good enough listener for you, and for that, I apologize. All right, all right, Cubby. But also for that, give me Unforgiven. Unforgiven. Oh. There's got to be a big number up there. Uh, He's one of four marksmen to get a pentakill this season. Is that over or under the actual value? 
I think that's over because I think only three marksmen have a penna. Or there's only been like two or three pennas in the league. Ding, ding, ding. That yeah. is a point going over to Dang. Cubby. Uh, it was a Zeri moment, baby. That was word said by you, Cubby, when he did get that pentakill. The two no. others, Meech and Wixie. Yeah, I was going to say, I know who the other two were. Uh, I, that's why when you said uh, over under four, I'm like, I think it's three. I'm with Cubby on this one. I, I will say, you know, obviously LCK has a special place in my heart. Uh, the certified Zeri moment definitely also still has a special place in my heart. <laughs> That one just came so early in the game. It was really, truly, just, honestly, one of the most disgusting pentakills I've ever seen. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. So we got our first point for Cubby, Alex. Sorry, falling behind, sneeze. man. What player are you picking? I've only answered one. He's answered two. Uh, give me yes. So give me Faisal. Behind. Give me Faisal. Faisal averages three point six kills per game. Is it over or under, Alex? Point six. What's a game? Uh, that's under. Alex gets a point. You Boom, are baby. right. He does high. average. That's high. That's high for top winners. I thought that yeah. was going to be. No, no, no. It's like, I'm, because I'm like, he actually has a lot for top laners. Yeah, he averages the most kills out of any top laner at 3.8. Even more impressive, his best KDA game was against Cloud9 Challengers, where he racked a 7 0 8 scoreline nice. as Gragas. The AP nice. Draggy into the, into the Jacks is pretty good. Or whatever you put in, it was pretty good. Uh, all right. Like to see that. Okay. All right, Cubby. Okay. Got... Give me Manui. I'm going to stick to my marksman here. Cubby, in I just week want to six, see if you lose. I haven't even studied, so. Got specific on this one. Week six had an average KDA of six. Got, oh, uh, damn. I'm going to go under. Oh. Under? Yeah, he played under. good. They, they split against C9, but they 3 one and Yeah, they he did. Had, he had big numbers in a couple of those other games. I think even in the loss, he had pretty big numbers. I got to double check this because I accidentally deleted it as we were talking. <gasps> oh, no. -y. Okay, Zero. okay, okay. <laughs> that number is under. You are correct. The yeah, actual yeah. number is 6.5. Uh, this is closer player than I thought. I, I've been watching a lot more closely since week five because we had that interview with Perry where he was like, man, Minui and Trevor are being slept on when it comes to the bottom lane. I think they perform uh, better than people expect of them. In the last two weeks, yes. I mean, Minui's been doing well. I I mean, I noticed it from like early in the split. It just, like, it was like week one or week two. I was like, hey, look, wow, like Minui's like not losing lane with Trevor. Like that's something I didn't expect. Uh, and then I was like looking at the second round Robin and like, oh, they got face Dignitas, C9's bot lane, FA's Hunter Thieves bot lane. Like, okay, we could see that start to change. Like if it gets exploited, it's yet to be exploited. I, they're playing no. good league. Uh, it's been really good to see and definitely a major improvement out of Manui. And Trevor continues to prove himself. I know a lot of orgs sleep on him given his age, being a much older player, but this is a format that allows for him to, you know, play and compete at the highest level. And he's been great. I believe Cubby was running the clock right here to try and doom Alex, but Alex, you I got a minute so, left to choose pretty. your final category. You're going to pick Pretty? Pretty. Has played five games of Talia this split, including this game. Uh, under. Under is correct. You're going to tie it up. Boom. It's six games like in total. It was baby. five. Lightning round. <laughs> it was right. five right before, but because of this game, it is going to be six. I bring this sat up because Talia last split, that was something we were really hyped up on. A lot of the play that he brought, he basically dragged Immortals across the finish line for some mm -hmm. of those dubs. Yeah. But spectacular on that champ. Give me Destiny. Destiny? Oh, you want to steal it fast. Yes. Okay, I, we're going to go win. back to back. Okay. Has played six different champions to split. Uh, that would be under. He's played more. Under. Point going over to Cubby. Yes, he has played seven. Just one more than that. Has been pretty hard locked on Lulu. Magical quick. Pick one. Shochi. 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 Highest DPM game was 12-15 DPM on Cassidy. Is it over or under? Under. You are wrong. Cubby wins. Yeah. And now Champ Select is ready. So take ah. us to game number two of 100 Thieves mm. Challengers versus Cincinnati Fear. <laughs> Ah oh, man, I I was just gut instinct. I'm like, I gotta go fast, gotta go fast, like Sonic. But it wasn't wasn't meant to be. Congratulations, Gubby, you won that one. Hold hold the golf claps. I I know. Thank you so much. I'm not clapping for you. Yeah, that's why I said golf claps. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Eric's clapping for you, but I'm not going. As your competition, I'll give you a friendly handshake. You know, that's how we do it. You know, yeah. hand off. Just uh, you know, shake hands, say nice. Mm. Exactly. Nice that's round. like okay. no claps, just handshake. Yeah. Oh, I respect that. Uh, speaking of handshakes, no side swap coming in. 
or sure champions band of our team uh and yeah we don't i think what we're gonna see be different is the first pick any not existing personally probably uh, like looking at the band oh, so far on. the virus is a little bit different hang on we have not seen any caitlin from unforgiven but that varus band changing maybe they want to open with zaya that is something well, we have seen a hundred thieves do so with ash off the board maybe that's the swap we're looking for opening here with zaya or Rakan. it is the zaya i was kind of looking at said 20 as maybe something else that wasn't uh well, that wasn't banned this time around that had been banned previously but as you called out rightfully the zaya take away from minui not having the Varus that he's been playing a lot as well nor the seraphine kind of looking at what else he's played during the split Jin is something that he has played and has done really well on but i just don't know how well it's going to do into a matchup like zaya rakan if that's taken off the table well they have the option to deny rakan here if they so choose but also they could take a different bot lane uh, we have seen minui I don't think he's going to opt to play the Zeri Zaya matchup. Uh, that's one that Unforgiven very familiar with oh. uh, each side. But oh, that's a little bit different as yeah. Minui. This is one of the champions that Minui was better on when he first started mm -hmm. out in his career. It will be the Kaisa. So already showing dive into Zaya. This is a little bit dangerous diving into Zaya, but still, this is a matchup that most of our players are very comfortable with. And they feel like they can execute uh, Zaya with the Kaisa, of course, that alt mobility getting around the feathers. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Now we see the answer of that Rakan, as expected, to get a very yeah. powerful duo in this bot lane. Plus, gives Destiny a bit more engaged that he kind of lacked last time with the Annie. He tried to go for some of those catch outs, just wasn't able to get them to land. But this is where I kind of look at what's available, what Trevor likes to play. So Leona sure. is the first thing that kind of spot uh, pops out to me for Trevor in this bot lane. So Juan completely skipped over by Yukino. This is why I'm going back. I'm looking at Trevor, Leona. Ma uh, Nautilus, these are two champions that he likes to play that pair up pretty well with Kai'Sa. I think it's going to be Naught coming out. Uh, it's the most common answer that we've seen in the Rakan. The one that I think Zazel specifically plays really well is Lost Zazel, still our strongest bot lane that we have in Challengers. Uh, so I, I think that Trevor might have learned a thing or two from C9 in that series, and we did see this matchup there. Uh, I will say the Vi. I thought it was going to be Sejuani, given that Sejuani is a little bit higher in terms of power, but Vi has a good matchup in the Wukong. Uh, you can follow the clone. Uh, mm -hmm. with Vi Alt and actually get through one of the alts from Wukong in terms of the CC of it if you do buffer with your CC and assist. So I like to see that. And I also like to see Fear denying that combo with Talia. I feel like that's warranted this game. It's also good at making sure that you can chase down Kaisa no matter There's where she goes. Ban. So looking at the second part of the bands, you call that that Talia against Pretty. Scion expected the beefy front line that it provided for fear last time was just insurmountable for sniper because at after a certain point renekton just doesn't do anything and i'm curious because i think fear they're setting up for a blind mid laner uh asol is on the board and it that is. is worth mentioning uh actually oriana still there jack's being taken off the board that's curious do we maybe see if faisal actually wants to blind a top winner here and give shochi counter it could be. I'm still look, leaning towards that Orianna because you don't want Pretty to play that either. With yeah. The, with Fi, with Rakan, still provides a lot. So that's why 100C is saying, yeah, you know what? We don't even want to see that on the field at all. We know that you're probably going to pick that if it's left open. So this is where we have to get the conversation around maybe that Aurelian Soul. But blind Aurelian Soul, I've heard a lot of people say that it's very situational with how he is now. You are at... A lot of dive threat uh, if you blind Aurelian Soul with both Rakan and Vi. I will say Aurelian Soul is a, a real option here for Pretty. I know it is a blind, but uh, it, it would likely lead to a Syndra response. I don't love Syndra uh, in, into the setup like going up against the Vi. Uh, so that is an option. As Speaking of options, we have whatever matchup Sniper wants into the Renekton. Likely going to be the Ornn. Uh, so a little bit more appeal Ugh. for the side of the Zaya and whatever pretty wants to pull out here as pretty is going to be blinding a champion i will say pretty he's been really leaning towards that syndra it is his most played it is on the board uh and it is one way that you can deal with kaisa when she does jump in if not then <gasps> i talked about the heroine soul so it's time it was a good setup for it and we'll see it what is. kind of response uh shoshi has i think the way that you beat this pick is you have to attack it uh and you have really oh. set it behind and they have a composition so far to do so from fear with the wukong also having nautilus things that can what easily dive here? into is this back Cinderella? line or is it different well and this is where i'm wondering if they want to grab bygar oh man 
Yes, let's go. Vigar just got buffed too. Vigar being picked up. Oh my, I, this is very different coming out yes. of fear. Okay, let, let's think about Vigar. Where, where's Vigar good here? Uh, everywhere. Rakan, it's really tough against Rakan. Orn has a way to kind of deal with the cage. You can trap early and soul in the cage, but you don't have the pressure to kill soul early. You do have a lot of range, so you should get out of lane for free. And if Vigar gets going, he can be a big problem. But uh, with Vigar, it's all about the cage. How many champs interact with the cage? It's, I mean, pretty gonna be careful when he goes in. Like, it is a telegraphed ability, the W of Aurelian Soul. So you can prep Cage for that and force him to cancel early and kite out. But this is a very creative counter that we have to a new pick that's uh, hitting the Rift in Ace Hole. So really interesting to see how this goes. See, I I can kind of theorize okay. the matchup, but I haven't seen it before. So it should be as, fun. As a Vigar aficionado, I feel like this is my, my territory. It actually is great into all the champions on 100C, except Vi. Vi is the only problem you're going to have to deal with because... She can just get through everything. Even though you have that ability as Orn to kind of use your charge, you'll still be stunned at the end of it because how long the stun is. But you once you put that down, you're putting it down as a defensive tool. Sure, you can use it as picks occasionally, but it's much more of how you make sure once you see your con pop quickness, you're putting that on your back line. Because if he ever dives in, he no longer has an escape. He can't just dance around the battlefield. And same yeah. for uh, Zaya. Zaya no longer has that safety net of Featherstorm once you're locked into the pit. Because even if you jump up, if you go into the wall, you're going to be stunned regardless. Yeah, that, that is a good point. So Look, this we, is the one time I, yeah. I can make really good color yeah. points because I actually do really like to yeah. play Vigar. <laughs> I, I'm also a Vigar fan. Uh, he... He's a he's a fun little devil to play in the mid lane. So when you are a quick anecdote before we get into like the games and stuff. Okay. Like one of my biggest highlight moments was me playing Vigar with Captain Flowers and like uh, I think it was Kangas and a couple other people. I was playing mid lane Vigar and Flowers was in uh, was trying to invade, but then the enemy uh, mid laner rotated around even though I was calling it out. He's like, "Yo, can you help me?" And so I just flashed over the raptor pit, put down the baby cage, got double stunned, and we double killed them to get the enemy jungler to uh, quit. <laughs> yeah. Well, I hope we don't have anyone rage quitting this game, uh, yeah. personally. But there was that play. Ooh, I like this start, though, from Destiny and Unforgiven. A lot of damage onto Manui and Trevor. The powerful thing about Kai'Sa Nautilus is that level 2, and trying to deny that and get yourself in that position initially does deny some of that initial power you have to fear. Yeah, also, if is just allowed to hit wave and match with Zaya, uh, she does get pushed, g given the cues. So, actually starting that engage first did give Hunter Thieves control over the wave and should give them push in this matchup. So, we'll play from Destiny as able to find the grand entrance and could start through the lane for Unforgiven as, honestly, at this point, denying that Zaya away from Minui, that is a big deal as mm -hmm. Minui's Zaya, uh, it, it, it's now 3-1 and one after the last game. Is, oh, the buffer missed. You mean Kai'Sa? Right. No, uh, I meant the Zaya from. Uh, I know, but you Manui. were saying Manu. You were saying you were saying Manui Zaya. No, yeah, I, I get to deny. Uh, for like, not only is unforgiving good at the pick, but I mean Manui's been really good. Oh, at okay, it, so. I, I was confused because I'm like he's playing Kaisa, bro. The Zaya's on oh. the other side. No, I mean uh, the strat was to take Z uh, Zaya. I think uh, part of that is the strength of Zaya, but also part of that's the strength of Fear playing with the Zaya Rakan and how good Manui's been in the pick. Yeah, yeah, I think it's been uh, one of his best champions right behind that Seraphine. Yeah. I definitely agree with you on that one. But looking at how the rest of the map is going so far, Faisal on this Renekton up against Sniper's Orn. Kind of a turn of fates, uh, fates for these uh, top laners where it's now more of that early game pressure, no longer just the weak side top laner for fear, while Sniper, he's put on that weak side. He's like, all right, I'm just going to do my best to farm up and not die. Should be a okay here for Sniper. As again, I expect all of our challengers, top laners, to be able to play out this matchup all right. Mm -hmm. Orn versus Renekton, a very common one, as Orn is the neutralizer. Uh, at the moment, though, we are going to have to look at the bot crab as the bot lane for 100 Thieves challengers. They have priority. Uh, Parry's in the river, but Yukino is also making his way bot because he has skirmish. All right, a little bit of a fight. Barry seems like he's got the upper hand initially, even with a level discrepancy. Yeah, he's fighting this one well. Like you said, the Conqueror that he's utilizing, flashing over the wall for first blood, even though you have the baby gate put down on a pretty. They still can't pick up the pink kill on the Barry. They flashed for it, so they oh. will finally get it. I will say the double buffs going over to Aurelian Soul. Okay, a little bit aggressive there from Perry, but he was down a level, but he had the Conqueror. He had the red buff. He was just going ham 
on the Yukino there and able to East Force him out of the Bot River. Yeah, I, absolutely mad stuff here from Perry. Just watching the skirmish, like you said, having that Conqueror that's really helping him out. But even after this, it did seem like I, th I thought for sure Perry was going to survive just because how much space he put himself with compared to that of Pretty. But unfortunately, it was just a nice flash. Now, flash into the, the, the Flame and Breath. It's going to be enough here uh, as I, on the bright side for 100 Thieves. This bot lane's in a really tough state right now for Minui and Trevor. Uh, you can see Minui is out of pots. Uh, that wave is shoving away from them. Zyrakhan does win at this point, so well played to the bot lane of 100 Thieves Challengers to make sure they get the crash and now the bounce back. Things are good for them. Uh, whereas Perry, he actually skipped over a couple camps on the top side. He's looking for Yukino. Will not find him, but uh, will figure out for his team that Yukino is going to be heading to the bot side of the map as Minui actually takes a, a reset where the wave state's not in his favor, uh, given how that lane's going out. So well played again from the bot lane of 100 Thieves Challengers. Utilizing this pick, making sure that Minui and Trevor not going to have quite the easy time, nor are they going to even be even when it comes to the fight around the, the, the dragon that could have happened. But since it was the recall, the resets for Fear's bot lane, they will forfeit over the first dragon of the game to 100 Thieves. Right play from 100 Thieves Challengers is th this early game. Off to a better start. I, I think this draft, I mean, it, it gives them some strength, at least with the Zaya Rakan. Uh, and again, the way that Unforgiven played this out, very good. Uh, he's already up 17 creeps and already has a Noon Quiver to his name, so item advantage in favor of Unforgiven and the Thieves. But it's the exact opposite story if we look at the top side of the map. Yeah. Sniper. I mean, it's expected early game. Orn matchup into Renekton. Even if Orn does have good base damage, Renekton's just that much better at lane phase and bullying around his competition. He's, you see, just diving in there, trying to trade some damage. Also was able to deny the cannon minion as, uh, oh, we, we have a reposition oh. on the Q from Pretty. Oh, getting oh. fancy here in the mid lane. Probably also just bored of just pushing Q. <laughs> just feel I'm like, yeah, you know what? I, it's, what am I supposed to do here in this matchup? Uh, I, I'm against the Vigar. I want to scale. He wants to scale. There's not not enough minions. He's not even here to fight me. All right, so I'll, I'll just do something fancy for now. I mean, they're both going rod and tier, so th I mean, it truly is just like. Okay, can I just say I do like that call out by uh, Matt Socials, the fear social manager. I mean, to kind of bold the tweeted after game one, and not game two. Who knows? No, that what? What do you mean? That's even better. Yeah, that, exactly. Uh, I think I think that's the play that everyone should go for. Trash talk beforehand, and then be like, "All right, they got us." Afterwards, like, trash talk that. after you win is kind of like just rubbing salt on the wound. I I agree. You should always, if you're gonna trash talk, say a uh, GG after for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's GG afterwards, but beforehand, be like, "Yo, we're the better players. We're gonna crush them." That's the way to go. You can see Manui and. Uh, Trevor trying really hard to get this wave in, which they will do successfully, so that they ain't going to be in a little bit better state for them. Well played, but the bot lane of fear still at a little bit of a disadvantage, but uh, 400 Thieves, we are a couple seconds away from that Herald spawning. Curious to see how they play this one out as they do have bot lane priority, and they will need the bot lane to win this out. Oh, oh no, this is just going to be one a one shot. nicely oh. done by Unforgiven and Destiny. Here, heal came in a little bit late from Manu. He was trying to wait out the ignite, but instead, I don't think it would have mattered. Yeah, Trevor just goes down again. No aftershock on this Nautilus. He is a piece of paper, and Unforgiven just shredded him with the feathers. It was a, it was a nice call from Hundred Thieves. They saw the play. They realized uh -oh. that it's only level five for both uh -oh. of them, and now they can call down you. Know, he's level six. Uh oh, this is a, an easy dive. Just a cease and desist up into the grand entrance so they can get the auto attack even if you get the killer instinct alt. Unforgiven should be able to chase that one down and gets the kill before Rip. even having to oh worry boy. about Trevor. Trevor now in a horrible position having to flash away just to survive. Oh boy, all right. Well, the bot lane of Under Thieves, uh, they're really taking it the bot lane of fear this time around. There is no Zaya pick for Manui. Instead, Unforgiven takes it. He is just destroying this landing phase by Magical. Oh, Trevor, so Trevor, Trevor, oh. what are you doing here? You don't belong here. Even to get the root onto Destiny, Destiny was able to use the battle dance away so they could reset the aggro and get a clean dive yet again. Oh my goodness, it keeps on piling on here as Trevor goes down again. That wave is denied from the Nautilus. Guys, so we'll be able to pick up a lot, but oh, that's a huge lead for Unforgiven, and he does not drop these Mad Magical. 
even in the last game for 100 Thieves when uh, their team did nothing, uh, you know, Unforgiven. He was a hell of a farmer. Uh, I think he had 330 uh, CS at like the 27 minute mark. Yep. Yeah, uh, well, he's going to start take off to the moon here as he has everything he wants at his disposal to make sure this game is his and goes the way of the Thieves. I'm glad you couldn't call that out last time. You know, even though he was farming up, didn't really have the most impact in the game. Sure, he looked good with the stats, but it was a little too late before he started becoming relevant to join the fights. Now, this game is completely turned. They're made sure that Unforgiven Destiny playing aggressively into the spot lane from moment one are the ones firmly in control of the game. I mean, un Unforgiven so good. And I, it's worth noting, this is his fifth play as Zaya. His Zaya is 4-0, this split in Challengers. Uh, it's been pretty filthy. Are you trying to uh, tell me the all pro LEC ADC is good at the game? Yeah, I'm trying to say he's really good. He's uh, really good. <laughs> he's like, I know that like, you know, the yesterday Dom was like asking like how good Unforgiven was for uh, NACL watchers. Um, yeah, he's really he's good. Very good. Uh, he's been doing really well. I know he was kind of asking that, like, you know, maybe in the spirits of, you know, thinking about replacements for 100 Thieves. I, I'm, that's not my place to judge. Uh, where my place is to judge is judge how good our uh, NACL players are. Yeah, uh, Unforgiven might be the best of them. Uh, it, it, he's crazy, man. He, he's done some wild stuff this point, and he is pounding this game right now. Arguably the best ADC that we have in the league, the best bot lane. I think, uh, I think, I think it's, it's a different. He, yeah, he is inarguably the best AD we have in the league, uh, and inarguably not the best bot lane we have in the league as well. Uh, but that's yeah. okay. You can be those things. Unforgiven has been wild. As okay, hold yeah, on. I like sniper. this play from Fear. That was a lot of plates they got off of Sniper, and they were even able to give a lot of that over to Manui because they sent Vice oh, to the bot lane. But now he's just getting dove by everybody and has yep. no escape because how fed this bot lane is. Yep, that's the ignite being dropped from Destiny. So the healing of Renekton taken away. He pops. Now, again, I think that play is necessary for Fear. This is the right play uh, because this bot lane was not going their way. But now the fact that Faisal was set behind. Faisal was destroying Orn in this matchup, by the way. Faisal was up like 156 at one point. That's not how the matchup should be going. Orn should be at least within around uh, 20. So props to Faisal for playing this out really well. Uh, but still, he goes down. So the bot lane pressure for Hunter Thieves still bleeding elsewhere as... Fear were forced to swap out of the lane that they match up, and Faisal was also forced to swap wow. out. He goes down, and now Orange is caught up. Did you see how just how much gold Unforgiven has? Yeah. He has, I think it's yeah. almost a thousand over the next closest. No, it's it, it's it's it fifteen hundred. Uh, no, 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 yeah, it's, it's it's a thousand because Perry. Okay, well, I was going over the lane matchup, but yes, you you'd be correct there. I'm saying gold. just the, a thousand gold lead over every other member in this game. Yeah. Uh, he'd be kind of crazy, man, this game, as uh, we'll see if Unforgiven. I mean, it's going to be Navori Quick Boyds. He's going to be auto attacking. I mean, it's so hard. All Yukino needs to do is just hover the Zaya, and this game's over. You can even see Sniper. He's dropping that bot wave. He doesn't want to extend that far on the map, so he's going to go support the Zaya, too. And we'll see if they can find a pick on the parry, as parry. Yeah, he's going to find some uh, unfriendly, uh, unfriendly territory. Shochi here to hover. As well, see, this is actually where I kind of want to... You say it's a very easy game for 100 Thieves. It is. But we haven't really seen Shochi or Pretty be impactful so far. They haven't oh, really yeah. been a part of anything. Trevor, he has paper, though. That's the bigger problem, is that he's just going to get melted down, so they can't even look for the fight afterwards. So, Fallen Star and Connect will scare away. Unfortunately, with Trevor getting caught out like that, Shochi and Perry have to fall. That magical. It is an easy game for 100 Thieves. I know that we haven't seen some of the members of Fear do anything yet, but part you of that doubt, is because of how this game... You doubt the Vigar, man. Never doubt the Vigar. Because no, that's going to be the thing that you have look to worry this. about. Look at the damage they got right into the back line. They got the kill on a parry. They've even got the knockup on Shochi. Wait, that was a cancel TP. Sniper made sure Faisal couldn't join. I don't think it would have mattered as Unforgiven was already out of there. And we see 100 Thieves. I mean, all they need to do is just play around the side, right? You can see Yukino. He is within 2,000 units of Unforgiven at all times and out. Okay, he's not going to go that deep as he knows that the Cage, one of the most powerful single abilities in League of Legends. Yeah, he's not going to commit past that, but still. I mean, this game for 100 Thieves, again, like, Unforgiven is so far ahead. All you have to do is just clear towards him. I, I, like that That's the game for 100 Thieves. And I don't think there's anything that Fear can throw at Unforgiven that beats him. I'm, I'm still look, I'm calling my shots, Fire man. It's never literally only Vigar. Never doubt, never doubt the Vigar is what I'm saying. Well, I'm going to doubt going 
full dive in Zaya of when Zaya was B1. Oh, yeah, Sorry. I mean, I, I do agree with that. I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm saying Vygar. Vygar's not a dive champion. This is where friend. I'd like to spread my Ezreal propaganda, all right? Okay, spread it. No, it's... Uh, it you just said you. this is where I want to spread my Ezreal propaganda. You know what? Screw as, as Karma in the Zaya Rakan, it's playable. You all scale, right, well. you actually have poke, and you don't overcommit to this champ. Is, oh, oh, boy. Looking for the play out of Manui. Manui. If Trevor is paper, so is Manui. Because they can chase this one down. They do force him back underneath the turret. Had to force the heal out of him. If it wasn't yeah, for Killer Rift. Instinct, he would have died. Let's play around Zaya. It's chill. That's Rift. Who's getting gold on the side lane? It's Renekton. We can live with that. It's a sniper. Dropping waves uh, for the good of the team. Picking up this Rift Herald. And it should be good setup here as Fear. They're going to reset for this third dragon. We do have the ports on the map, which means we have a Hextech Soul. Uh, and now it's just all about... You're trying to take control over the bot side of the map while we just had 100 Thieves make a play on the top side. Because this dragon, they really need it to go their way. Because time right now is not their friend. No. It, it, this is definitely getting difficult for Fear. I, I just like to sell my Vygar propaganda because I am a Vygar enthusiast. But looking at how this game is right now, you have a 2... Zero and three, Azaya. Kraken Slayer already completed. Having the components working towards that Navori Quick Blades, as you called out as well. Plus, you already have Black Cleaver from Yukino to add in that armor shred that Zaya would it covets to have. All right, all eyes on Unforgiven here. He's got no sums. He can go Airborne, but if Unforgiven lives, this team fight's over for fear. The, it, the game really is that simple for the side of Hundred Thieves. I mean, it's oh, it's kind of similar to last game, except that just oh, slightly on. different because you got a fed Unforgiven, though Destiny nearly taken oh, down while Yukino got a lot of attention off of Trevor. They couldn't re-engage. Destiny's going to have to recall. And with the dragon having spawn, Fear turned their eyes towards the objective. Yeah, uh, oopsie there from Destiny as a nice side step from Faisal actually opens up some form of window for Fear and Hunter Thieves. This game's so over. They aren't even going to fight it. They're just like, all right, uh, we take mid. You take the dragon. We're not going to risk this at all. Uh, so it does delay this dragon stack. But still, they get something positive out of it as Shelly gets crashed in the mid. That's mid-outer, and they should escort it for a second crash here. Okay, pulling back in. Looking for a bit of damage on a Cypher, but nice knockup. And here's the oh sky boy. to send. Huge knockup. When they got Perry having to flash away with Trevor Lowe. They used the Orn Horn, but it wasn't enough to pick up the kills. As you can know, barely dodges away from the baby cage. One point by Sniper, he bought a lot of space, and again, uh, this turret falls in the next wave. Uh oh, so. Yukino finds Perry, cancels the recalls of him, Faisal, and Manui. That just gives more opportunity for Unforgiven. Oh, no, he has to, has to cancel his own recall. He's afraid as Perry continues to chase Yukino. He's just not deterred by this. He's like, I think I can deal uh -oh. with you. Well, all the while, this is, you can't uh -oh. deal with this. Faisal, uh -oh. Manui, you cannot uh -oh. deal with Unforgiven by yourselves, even if Barry's able to get the solo kill on the other side. It's on Chochi, trying to get the damage on Unforgiven. They're trying to get back. They didn't get it. Triple kill from Unforgiven. They could make it a quadra kill. Oh, they just want the damage. All right, fear through the kitchen sink and Unforgiven. And guess what? Saya, she went airborne. She ripped them to shreds and Unforgiven. He continues to be the raid boss in this game, man. Is you cannot deal with Unforgiven. The first pick, Saya, he's destroying the game, man. That's cool. He just completed the Navaris as well. Purchased a BF sword on top of it oh, all. Oh my goodness. He's got a 700 gold bounty on his name. Five kills to his name as well. Oh my god, I didn't even see how this fight started because we had, uh, you know, our uh, top laner, or junglers, I should say, fighting on the top side, but it's a flash from Faisal. Perry's not there, uh, so they get shredded instantly, and then Shochi comes in, it's a little bit late. Unforgiven, the only mistake he makes there is he catches the W, uh, but then he steps forward to dodge that one. Pretty badass, uh, as he just mm -hmm. rips through Wukong, gonna hit the wave, he's fine, he doesn't even want to risk it. Unforgiven, man. You're really good at this game, you are so yes, good. Is. In this league, you are hard to talk about because the competition just cannot hold a candle to Unforgiven. There's only so many marksmen that can even compete with this guy in this league, and Unforgiven's proven that in game two today. He's a cut above the rest. I mean, every time we've seen 100 Thieves win has been off the back of his carry performances. Even in games that have looked difficult and dire, he'll find a way to find these fights, whether it be finding that angle, positioning properly, or in the case of this game, just get ahead for moment one. 
I mean, the way that he put out that lane was pretty ridiculous in the three-wave crash. And then he throws it on uh, Kai'Sa on the way back. Kai'Sa had the base without getting the wave in. It was just disaster from there for fear. Uh, as Unforgive it, he's just that good. You make any mistakes against this guy. The degree of which he punishes is just ridiculous. Uh, and the fact that, I mean, he's in this league in the first place again, he's like legitimately hard to talk about because... You know, he should have beer. Like, he is an LCS caliber 80 carry. That's, it almost feels insulting saying that, given what he's accomplished in the past. This, this guy is so good. And now we get to see this fight as Perry. He's getting ripped apart by Unforgiven. That's how much damage they have. Everyone Trevor is. Trevor 2, Paper Mache. Yeah, uh, you know, pretty... Uh, he's just been chilling on the ASOL, too. I mean, this is like the ASOL dream game, you know? It's like the mid lane game where, like, you each just, like, you know... I don't, I don't know, I, see, I, see, you have very different ideas of what I find a dream game. I, I find a dream game oh, not where I'm just coasting and my bot lane's fed. It's yeah. like, I actually am the one making plays and looking like the hero. Yeah, Matt Magical, they just increased LP gains. You don't want that? You don't want to coast to LP gains? No. Okay, hold on. Good night. All right, but nice flash away from Manui as they re-engage onto Destiny, but you don't have any damage, Manui. Sniper. And here is the call of the Forge God. Then they easily can take down Manui. All the while, three members still on top of Varen, securing that, pulling back in Sniper, but he is a tanky boy at this point, and you have no damage. Yeah, he's chilling. The rest of uh, Andrathy's challengers are chilling. Uh, oh, and that's God. a bloodthirster for Unforgiven, so... He's three uh, items. Manui is uh, uh, one item and a half. Uh, this next fight's going to be fun. Hey, give a refresh on Red Buff, too. Why not? Might as well. <laughs> Might as well. I unless mean, I, it, it, unless it, they it can the right find call. a way to kill Unforgiven... Give him Blue Buff, too. Why not? Just give him yeah. everything! Yeah, this is his game! Yep. This All right. is his yep. game! Oh my goodness. Okay, well this is gonna be fun. Uh, how many kills does Unforgiven get in the next fight, that Magical? He could get a Penta, honestly, with how fed he is. Okay, so you're gonna guess five? Yeah. I'm gonna guess he walks home with a triple, at least. If not, I, I feel like his team failed him. Co a coward mechanics here from Cubby. Not even going for the quad. All right, fine, I'll go for the quad, whatever. Yeah, there we go, all right. Because right now, Unforgiven, escorting some of these minions like into the base. Uh, of course, uh, of course. Call me a coward, what else am I supposed to do? You bend. That's that's what happens. All right, well, uh, this game, again, looking pretty over. Uh, we had Faisal get some important objective bounty. Uh, we traded that for an inhibitor. Uh, and Hunter Thieves, again, ignoring the dragon while they had Baron up. I do like that as, okay. Okay, yeah, I mean. Oh, yeah. Shochi Big just time. doesn't, he doesn't have any damage right now. He yeah. doesn't even have his death cap completed. It, they're so far behind. Here, where, where they were really weren't able to get the game. Oh, okay, here we oh, go. Oh, nice engage into oh, the back The skies descend on fear. Everyone ripped apart. They run for the hills, but there is no hill for it to save no. them as it's a clean ace for 100 thieves. That magical unforgiving got zero kills in that fight. I know. That's actually even funnier. Soul. That's even funnier. Plus for God. Okay, it's GG's. What a game. Unforgiven. You're really damn good. The rest of the 100 Thieves, they had a scaling comp. They're into this game in fear. You got a 1-1 split with the Thieves, man. I got to say, uh, each of our teams here, I, I think 100 Thieves, they played really well around Zyra Rakan's uh, in game two. Game one, same thing for fear. Looking good and that split. Still tied up in the standings, moving into the last week of our regular season. Making sure there's no distance gained by Fear. They will still be tied in fourth place. Even if there's one kill picked up at the very end. They have the lead. They have the minions. Oh. And maybe, though, they've got to be careful. Unforgiven! He's killed! They have to finish the minions! The base taken down by Pretty to make sure there is the split after all. Ah, the raid boss was down. It's fine. You know, we, we just uh, take one more on Unforgiven. Uh, but, oh boy, Unforgiven. He was ridiculous that game. Absolutely nothing the fear could do. Uh, B1 Zaya, you end up with Wukong plus Renekton. I don't like that strategy. Uh, and we saw Unforgiven punished to the maximum degree against Cincinnati Fear as he won his lane. He won the game. Uh, and the way that 100 Thieves played around it, you can you know, just you know shadow the raid boss. Pretty easy. Yeah, pretty much. Just saying, all right, Zaya, Unforgiven, the, the world is your oyster. Destiny could be the one to engage. I'll be here to make sure you're alive. Yeah, uh, and then also we had the raid boss at the end of the game because like we didn't even get to talk about Aurelian Soul and how 
He's a champ because, you know, we it's just kind of... Saya took mid. all the attention. Well, mid was boring, but, you know, Asol does scale, and he was a raid boss by the end, so, you know, well played pretty. Yeah, I mean, it was well played. It was... The, though it's, like I said, the coasting, because you had such a fed bot lane, it's also hard to argue with the logic of, hey, Zaya, the one who just was able to get three kills off of a dive because people kept resetting the bot lane by themselves, helps out a lot, but that's going to be a tied series. One apiece. For Cincinnati Fear and 100 Thieves Challengers, we're going to toss a break. And when we come back, we'll bring back Deserex for our interview with the victorious 100 Thieves. We'll see you there. Welcome back, everyone, to the North American Challengers League. I am joined by Pretty, the mid laner of 100 Thieves Challengers. Congratulations on the win, brother. Thank you very much. Right, first things first, man. How are you liking the new Aurelian Soul? I think this champ... Should not exist in League of Legends, honestly. Um, it's just I, I don't like this style, this style of champs that are like if you don't snowball early, you just lose the game because it's like it's either gonna be too OP and you're gonna have a, kind of an easy time in early, or it's gonna be too bad and like you'll never be able to play early game. Like right now, it's more on the easier side. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, necessarily that hard to survive. I mean, a team that plays against Raylan Soul has to be really coordinated and snowball the game, and like. Yeah, some matchups in mid can maybe be hard one v one, but yeah, you go road of ages, so lane's pretty much easy one v one. It's just like jungle and support, maybe like can make it hard for you. But I I think she's in a really good spot right now, and like every team should be playing it basically. Yeah, I already some teams hopping on it. I know we had a team liquid over on the Challenger League stream popping on that one as well. So fun to see that champion. You know, we, we were talking a little bit uh, before the match. Uh, I was hearing it was a rough week to get ready for. I heard we had a, a few sick players for 100 Thieves Challengers. Yeah, it was. Unfortunately, uh, Hyper couldn't even like scream with us because um, yeah, like medical issues basically. And also Yukino, he was also sick uh, the last days and we also had like a bit less time because we played Monday, so our off day was on Tuesday, and we had even one less um, basically scream day. So we ended up just playing two uh, scream days, and one of them our opponents cancelled as well the second block. So it was not a lot of practice, and like yeah. it was a new patch with a lot of new champions. So like I played the and Soul like once in screams, and yeah, I just busted it out today. We we went into this week knowing <laughs> that we might have to first time some stuff. Like we did, we really did it in the first game, and it yeah. didn't go well. So. Yeah, I mean, the I, second game at least it went well. I, I was going to ask about that, like draft strategy coming into where you're lacking practice, it's a new patch. Is that just go for comfort? Uh, not necessarily comfort, but like we trust each other that we will play a lot of picks in solo queue and that we will make them work. Like we will communicate with each other what those picks need in draft. And a lot of times, you know, what we try to do is like, let's say I bring up Aurelian Soul. Uh, what, do, what do I think is good in jungle with it? Uh, I'm not going to say here, but you know. <laughs> and I'll bring it up to Yukino and then we'll figure out like a comp to play. But the thing is, we cannot practice on it because we don't have games. So we kind of have to like trust that we will play it well. You know, we will like make a plan from beforehand and then it's kind of like reball it. Uh, but it's not that hard as long as like you communicate well what you need. And a lot of times, you know, like when, when you play like a champ like Aurelian Soul, then, you know, like you can compare it to like, you can say what I need. I need uh, this and that in team fights, And it's like, as like a play style, it matches a lot of other champs. So it's not that hard for someone who, you know, has like experience playing in different metas, if it makes sense. Um, but yeah, you have to rely on communicating like what you need and not like actually doing it, not actually practicing, but like just doing it first time, you know, in official. And it's good to hear you have that not just confidence but communication on top of it because we did talk midway through the split where you were telling me you felt nervous coming into the split and that you're ramping up in confidence each week playing with this roster well pretty we're at the near end of the regular season you're one match away from playoffs how confident do you feel playing with these boys now um still very confident um we like uh, are not that high in the standings as as we would like I think we're like fourth place like it was important to win for us against fear today to have like a better spot for playoffs um so i'm a bit disappointed in that uh but to be honest uh we had like uh some visa issues at the start like even like in the first week we didn't have our bot lane up until like the day that we actually played the second game like the second day of the first week basically so it's a bit rough not having uh you know scream time but yeah the more we play and uh, we try to like uh, identify the issues and obviously like get better at it. Uh, now in playoffs, it will be a lot about like 
playing what we're best at and you know just being the best we can um not necessarily that much about practice but more about performance and we have very experienced players so like we know what it is to have playoffs i mean we have our rookies as well but i think you can tell they don't go under pressure they they don't really care about those games they're they're ready for it you know i i noticed uh, that you guys have Quite a bit of talent over every single role. I mean, individual play from yourself, Pretty, has been one of my favorite things to watch. You used to rock people when they'd least expect it. Uh, pun intended for uh, Talia that was played uh, back in the last split. Love that throughout. Uh, great to see the communication's been going well with a lot of these rookies as it is week seven. Uh, now, you got one more match ahead of you. I did talk about that earlier, Team Liquid Challengers. Uh, both your rosters, you know, um, there's big eyes onto this matchup to say the least so how are we feeling going into this matchup versus tlc and, and of course another player on the asol train that is apa yeah um the asol will be contested you already know uh we will see we'll come up we'll cook some stuff for the draft and uh, i feel confident i think uh stream results against them have been uh mostly good i think they're not playing as well as they were at the start of the split, if it makes sense. Um, I think that we, uh, like I told you, it, it was important for us to play like champs that we, you know, played before, like what you saw in the second game. Um, so like we will come up with like a good plan, and I think uh, we're probably gonna get the two zero. Need All to right. play well and have a good day. Like to hear the confidence, man. I love to hear it. You got any shout outs before we let you go? Um, just shout outs to like everybody who's supporting us, like my family, everything, everyone who just like, you know, cares about the hundred thieves and wants us to do well, likes our games. I hope you guys enjoy the games. Uh, today they were, I mean, the second game was pretty fun. You know, you can see how good Zaya Rakan is. Uh, my bot lane pretty much smurfed the game. So yeah, didn't have to do much. It's always a blast to cover your games, Purdy. Thank you for joining us. Congratulations on your win and best of luck in the rest of the regular season. We're going to take a moment to throw it over a break while we get ready for our final game of the day. And that is going to be Evil Geniuses Challengers versus Immortals Challengers.